attract grants, you have to market yourself. So you put up sites and call yourself labs and groups and things like that in, in order to get visibility. And in my entire experience in academia, I never went to any superior and asked them any permission to put up any of these labs. So uh, the fact that this was singled out, let alone shut down, is jaw-dropping. It's astonishing. I have never been uh, treated like this in my about 30 years in academia. Shut up, you freak! I say shut up! It's a man! If you peel back the onion, I think that there's no doubt that the center of this is my work in what would some would call intelligent design. People really get emotional about this. Uh, when you were saying intelligent design in, in a room of academics, them's fighting words. Creationists. Astronomer Guillermo Gonzalez found himself in a fierce shootout with Iowa State University following the publication of his book, arguing that the universe is intelligently designed. Despite a stellar research record that has led to the discovery of several planets, his application for tenure was denied putting his career in jeopardy. I worried about my tenure a little bit in 2005 when the petition was being circulated because uh, I viewed that as a strategy of Hector Avalos and his associates to try to poison the atmosphere on campus against me because he knew I, didn't, I wasn't tenured yet and I was very vulnerable. I have little doubt that I would have tenure now uh, if I hadn't done any professional work on intelligent design. Dr. Gonzalez had this advice for scientists who might be thinking about following his example. If they value their careers, <laughs> they should keep quiet about their intelligent design views. We know there are times and places to be quiet, and other times and places when we can make noise if we want to. Will you show us? Of course. Boys and girls, how would you like to show some of the ways we know of being quiet? It's the kind of thing where you just learn to keep your mouth shut. In addition to those scientists who were willing to appear on camera, we encountered many more who didn't dare show their face for fear of losing their jobs. You use an intelligent design perspective to get the research done, but you're not allowed to talk about it in public. And so there is definitely incentive, if you think about it, for people to remain within the mainstream. You know, what, what's he up to? What, what is he thinking? Is he one of them? That kind of thing. If I write intelligent design, they hear creationism. They hear religious right. They hear theocracy. So it appears Mr. Shermer, the self-styled skeptic, was wrong on this one. Intelligent design was being suppressed in a systematic and ruthless fashion. But maybe intelligent design should be suppressed. I didn't like what was happening to these scientists, but on the other hand, we don't want our kids being taught that the Earth is flat or that the Holocaust never happened. It was time to ask the scientific establishment what was so bad about intelligent design? Intelligent design people are not genuine scientists. Intelligent design is a racket. It's just propaganda. The only intelligent thing about it is to have got people to call it that. It's really very stupid as well. Huh? Everybody knows science education in America is appalling. What we don't need at this time is intelligent design in the classrooms. To present intelligent design stunts their educational growth. It stunts their... What was Dr. Sternberg's crime? He dared to publish an article by Dr. Stephen Meyer, one of the leading lights of the intelligent design movement. The paper ignited a firestorm of controversy merely because it suggested intelligent design might be able to explain how life began. As a result, Dr. Sternberg lost his office, his political and religious beliefs were investigated, and he was pressured to resign. The questioning of Darwinism was was a, a bridge too far for many. The mentioning of intelligent design that occurs at the end of the paper was, was over the top. And I think the intelligent design proponents have raised a number of very important questions. And you wanted to get those questions brought up and discussed. Placed on, placed on the table. Placed on the table. People were so upset about it. They were so upset that you could see their, they had a physical emotional reaction. Wow. They were saying that Stephen C. Meyer is a well-known Christian, that Stephen C. Meyer is an intelligent design proponent, that Stephen C. Meyer is a Republican. 
it was all couched in terms of religion, politics, and sociology. The way the chair of the department um, uh, put it is that I was viewed as an intellectual terrorist. Terrorist? Because of giving the topic of intelligent design some modicum of credibility. What happened to Dr. Sternberg was terrible. And a huge part of freedom is freedom of inquiry. But now, I'm sorry to say, freedom of inquiry in science is being suppressed. Behind me stands a wall that encircles the free sectors of this city, part of a vast system of barriers. There are people out there who want to keep science in a little box where it can't possibly touch a higher power, cannot possibly touch God. Those barriers cut across Germany in a gash of barbed wire, concrete, dog runs, and guard towers. If you believe in God, and you believe that there's an intrinsic order in the universe, and you believe that it's the role of science to try to pursue and understand better that order, you will be ostracized. I'm frightened by this, but I'm not going to let it stop me from investigating and from speaking. The wall cannot withstand freedom. What I'm asking for is, is the freedom to follow the evidence wherever it leads. My hope is that there'll be enough independent thinking scientists who don't like to be told what to think. People on both sides of the argument being prepared to talk and listen. And above all, a willingness to keep these dialogues open. It might allow a lot of very good scientists to be scientists who aren't being allowed to be scientists right now. I don't care what they end up as being. I don't care if they end up being religious, or a young earth creationist. If they have thought their way through the issues and get there, I'm all for them. And why do I think we're going to win in this struggle? Because truth crushed earth will rise again. To find out what's true has a value all of its own. If it has additional good consequences, so be it. Because no lie can live forever. And I believe that science gives us one perspective on the world, and our religious insight gives us another perspective on the world. And by putting the two together, they will seem more deeply and more truly. And if we will stand up for freedom, freedom is the victor. If we all do that, we will overcome.